guys. What's up? It's JP. And I haven't made a video for a while, so uh, let's make a video. First of all, we're not going to need the sand cast and stuff. But, I'll show you what uh, I'm currently working with. Um, long time ago, I had molded an Iron Man helmet. And, uh, I actually gave a few away, traded. And uh, it it was good for the time, okay. Uh, but I didn't get to spend enough time with it. Now what you're looking at here is a rough cast that just sat in the mold for a long time, so it's kind of nasty. And this was uh, actually a bad batch of resin. Uh, I had got from Smooth on. Uh, it it was just uh, really bad. It uh, oxidized. Um, it just was slap full of bubbles and uh, it was very dry. And, and this is supposed to be a 65D, so it's supposed to be uh, a little flexible, but uh, not at all. It's totally rigid. Anyway, the only, whole, the only thing holding this together is super glue. But uh, I still have the mold, so if I ever want to cast me some more, I can. Uh, so th this is just uh, an example. Uh, I don't really have a finished one down here right now, but uh, anyway. This was the second Iron Man helmet I actually molded and casted. Uh, the first one is in my house, the first version which was a War Machine concept version. Uh, it's actually inside, and it's one of my prized possessions. It's my first actual sculpt and mold. So, uh, this is coming later on. Um, originally, this was, uh, I used pet files to make this. Um, minor sculpting the Bondo, but I really didn't spend a lot of time with this helmet. As you can see, it lacks the ear details and the lines. Uh, it's just a, you know, got too anxious when the silicone got there, so uh, I didn't spend the time to put those extra detail. Anyway, years later, uh, it's gotten on my nerves. Uh, every time I made this, and once cleaned up, it does look really good. Uh, it's extremely form-fitting to the face. I uh, made it like that so if you could move around the shoulders of your costume easier, uh, but found that a lot of people had trouble putting it on. Uh, of course, you can't cut the back out, make this three sections, goes on very easy, uh, fits up to, a, I'd say, a 24 inch head diameter. So, anyway, it was good for its time, I learned a lot with it, uh, it has an okay face plate, but Anyway, so, as I was on the road last year and in my hotel a lot, uh, I have a lot of different pet pots. Iron Man, War Machine, etc., etc. So I began doing And really experimenting with curving the foam. And, uh, you know, I probably built about 10 Iron Man helmets. Uh, some of them I brought home, some of them I threw away. I just hated the way they were. I tried thin foam, thick foam, no heat, heat, uh, naturally trying to stretch and bend the foam without the heat. Uh, it works okay, but it, it works way better with heat. Uh, I'm using a heat gun from a blow dryer, a heat gun, and even a propane torch. Uh, all were good. Uh, the propane torch you have to watch because I actually can set shit on fire. So, uh, anyway, I'll show you what I kind of came up with. Now, as I said, I've been experimenting for a while now with the foam and stuff. Uh, this helmet did actually look good uh, before I pulled it out of the mold. Uh, the ears I actually sculpted in wood and uh, bondo. 
and we'll be casting those soon. Uh, they'll be very high detail here. Uh, the face plate came out great. I spent a lot of time heat forming this, and even though I left the seam line here uh, on its predecessor, that's easily cured. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, like I said, I've done a lot of experimenting. So, a lot of my helmets have been trashed, uh, but some of them with success. Now, you'll notice the shine on this helmet is very shiny and does not crack, okay? Uh, I have gone through numerous types of paints trying to figure out how I could get this hot, high gloss of a shine uh, without it being brittle and cracking. The only thing I've come up with to avoid the foam look and get back to this polished car look is actually automotive paint. Uh, specifically, this is about four layers. Uh, I was painting something else with automotive paint and had some loaded clear, so as I was spraying, I sprayed this one and sprayed and sprayed. Um, and uh, it actually came out pretty good. Now, Automotive paint is highly toxic. Not everybody has an air compressor and spray gun and is set up for that. So, right now I am looking at some varnishes, which have a, they are flexible when they do cure. So, I'm looking at that right now and I'm actually trying that out on some foam inside. Anyway, so most of my helmets uh, became donors. This one here. Uh, I tried to do the top without cutting the, the lines and just heat form it and I ended up with like kind of like a flat top up there um, as well as the face. I put very minimal cuts and uh, ended up with this. Uh, now take it under this clear coat is some layers of fiberglass resin. I just used this. Gave it a little rigidity. Um, but. Uh, just a junk helmet. I've been, uh, you know, experimenting different things. Uh, I'm actually become very uh, interested in foam building, in a fetish, if you will, um, because there's so much that can be done with it, and it's amazing the low cost of the material. Now, I'm not ruling out clay and bondo and uh, casting resins and stuff like that. I still use a butt ton of that stuff. But, you can make anything with some scissors, hot glue, and some EVA floor mats. Oh, and some razor blades. So, back when I first started making props, that would have been really cool to know uh, because it's mega affordable and your mind is, is the limit. I mean, you can make most anything at home. Uh, with the exception of like Google faces and stuff like that, but I have seen people do that. So anyway, now that I've lectured you on my journeys in EVA foam, uh, I'll show you guys uh, this helmet here. Uh, this helmet was uh, that foam helmet I just showed you. Uh, anyway, yeah, it looks lopsided, but it's because I have the flashing still on here kind of keep the weight off of this as I sculpt the uh, Rondo etc. But uh, I basically started with that foam one. I made a mold. Uh, I actually was using household silicone, but I decided uh, latex would be better for this application. So I made a latex mold, made with latex and uh, some kitchen rags, laid up and uh, made a decent layer. Uh, made a uh, plaster bandage casting, uh, or a mold, and I'll show you that. Obviously, I didn't want to spend a lot of resources making a throwaway mold, so uh, I have boxes of plaster bandages, and uh, I have a couple of gallons of uh, latex, which I still have plenty more, but uh, uh, the plaster bandages cured up right. I took my time, laid them up. I put keys made out of latex, and uh, made the Iron Man hole, uh, mold. Uh, and there's uh, layers of kitchen rag in here, which is going to keep this latex from shrinking. So uh, it's you know been about a week old with no uh, no casting in it and uh, very minimal shrinkage. So.
So overall, it worked pretty good. If I decide I need another casting, I believe I could get another 10 out of this. Now, uh, I don't recommend, highly recommend latex molds because of their shrinkability and they take a long time to make. Uh, it took me about a week and a half of putting about a layer or two layers on the mask every day to build up tin, put some kitchen rags in there, and then layer it up from there. Uh, now, onto this bad boy. This is actually uh, a product of I put some gel coat in that mold and then I fiberglassed it, which was painfully difficult uh, because I had to place the fiberglass in here and stuff. I got real itchy and blah, blah, blah. I should have ordered me some casting resin. Anyway, it's in the mail. But we did end up with a workable casting. Okay, You'll notice I have a lot of Bondo on here that's been shaved down and shaped. Uh, I am trying to just get, you know, very, a very nice profile on it because, uh, as you can see, it's bigger than its original one. Uh, this is so I can put electronics in it and be comfortable, a lot more comfortable to wear. Uh, it still looks good scale-wise. Uh, so I'm trying to get a nice profile on here because when I finish this bad boy, it will go in the mold. And, uh, after this one, that will, that will hopefully be the, uh, the definitive Two Coast Customs Mark III Iron Man helmet. Uh, it's just been something that's been irking me for a long time, and I just wanted a really nice one. I uh, probably could have uh, got the same uh, achievement with clay and uh, making a throwaway mold. This is more practical, um, basically, because uh, I don't have to have a big armature somewhere. Um, and I don't know. I just I decided to do it this way. I really don't have a good reason why I'm doing it like this. Um, however, uh, it is easier to sculpt the Bondo than it is outside right now, but it's very hot. And I use oil-based clay, so that stuff stays soft, soft. I don't have hard clay, so this is an advantage to what I'm doing. This. Um, so, as you can see, uh, it looks kind of brown, and it is, because uh, the uh, gel coat was slightly tacky. I don't know, I guess I didn't put enough hardener. Uh, it's not tacky now, uh, but uh, I put a coat of paint on it, and the, uh, the hardener soaked right through the paint and made it gooey. So I actually took my propane torch and heated it up and kind of just gassed out the rest of the hardener. And uh, it's still got a little tack to it, but it's very workable now and it's letting the Bondo cure up without giving me those wet spots through the, the uh, Bondo, uh, letting me know that I can actually paint over it. So uh, I'm just taking my time, sculpting this down bit by bit, trying to get a nice roundness to it. Um, I'll show you some tools because I haven't seen people using them online, or I know they're using them, they're just not showing them. Um, but I'll show you guys the way I do everything, so if it helps, it helps. Uh, I'm using a scraper, just a steel scraper, uh, some different size files, um, not, not so much uh, in the beginning, but uh, a roundover file and a flat file. sculpting tool, which I've showed you guys in earlier videos, how I do the sculpting with the uh, Bondo before it cures. Um, and very important to uh, this build is a rasp. Um, this rasp really helps you uh, chuck that Bondo into shape, man. It rips it up. Now, it's going to give you some deep grooves, but you can bust the shape out, and then you can just put a thin layer of Bondo and just clear those grooves on up. So this has proven to be a very good tool in this application. Chisel, uh, different size chisels, but uh, you know, if you're just trying to get in there and get a, a line real profile, you can just 
Take your time, scoop that chisel on up, and pull that line as clean as you want it. Again, there's I have different, uh, 30 different size chisels, so that will come. Uh, I've worked actually this area here, and I'm about to start working on this area here, uh, which I'm going to do a time lapse and show you guys how I'm using these tools to get that thing smooth. Uh, it is nowhere near smooth now, uh, but at this point, I'm just uh, working the shape. So, uh, yeah, this is my first video back in the making prop videos, fellas. So, um, with that being said, uh, I guess I'm going to try to make a new intro as well, because somehow, my really loud, obnoxious one got deleted off my computer. So, anyway, um, if any of you guys are any good with that, let me know. So I'll hook you up for hooking me up. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You need a cast or something, and you make me a nice intro, you can make it happen. So, alright guys, uh, I've enjoyed making this video, and I uh, can't wait to make some more. Um, this is JP with Two Coast Customs, and we'll see you on the next one. Check out my website, twocoastcustoms.com.